and welcome to the Arsenal Way. Back again with you guys for another episode of our Arsenal Agenda series. I'm joined this morning by Umar. How do you make you good, Joel? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. It's a bit weird that the Premier League season uh, has concluded, but yeah, I'm not too bad. Hope you're doing well as well. Yeah, not too shabby, mate. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's a bit sad in a way. You know, I'm always I struggled at the end of last season a lot because mm. obviously that. The promise of Champions League football beckoned and it didn't happen. Uh, and there was a lot of disillusion, you know, amongst the fan base. This season, yes, there's disappointment that the title challenge, that Umar's promise, remember when he promised us we'd be winning the league, guys? Remember that? Yeah, that didn't happen. Uh, <laughs> so take anything he says from now with a pinch with of salt. A pinch of salt, exactly. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's obviously there's still disappointment that it didn't end in the way that we wanted it to. But um, we do have Champions League football to look forward to for next season. And that's going to be exciting. I've got my Arsenal shirt at the weekend, Champions League patch on the sides, Zinchenko on the back. And uh, very much looking forward to it. How did you find your end of season emotions? Yeah, it's a bit weird, um, especially because... As you've just touched on, I thought we were going to do it. I thought we were going to go all the way. But, yeah, it's, it, it has, in perspective, it has been a very good season, if I'm honest. Um, the moments that this club has given us, um, the highs, the lows, it's been an emotional roller coaster at the best of times, but I wouldn't have it any other way. If I'm honest, um, we've had some great moments. When you go back to that Reese Nelson strike against Bournemouth, the, the jubilation that I experienced at the Emirates, um, it's, it's going to be something, something's going to have to top that uh, because that, that, that emotion was just raw. It was just, it was just amazing to just be there, just to witness that moment. Um, great wins against our North London rivals, Tottenham doing the double over them. Um, big wins against Manchester United, Chelsea going away to Newcastle United, away from home, um, which uh, we suffered last season, getting a great win there. So there's been so many highs. We've improved, we've developed. Um, we're not the finished article. Um, I, I just want to say that uh, it's a team which is inexperienced, which is evolving, which is improving. And there's going to be uh, more blips that they're going to face. But that's just part and parcel of where we're at right now. But this is a team which is going to continue to improve. Um, I find it funny. Yesterday, I was watching Sky Sports and um, they were analysing the season overall. I think it was Roy Keane, um, Jamie Carragher, Michael Richards. And they were asked in terms of who's more, more than likely to challenge Manchester City next season for, for this Premier League title. And then obviously bias comes, comes to fruition when Roy Keane starts talking about Manchester United. Carragher speaks about Liverpool, etc. But nobody again speaks about Arsenal. And Take away the biasness and everything. But Arsenal are the best team right now, well positioned to challenge again and compete with Manchester City. Like people just think because we've faltered at the latter stages of the season, this is just a crazy season, a one-off season, and we're not going to be up there challenging again. I disagree completely. I think Mikel Arteta, he done a great speech yesterday at full time. Obviously, you were there. He realises where Manchester City are, but he realises that Arsenal are well equipped to challenge Manchester City again next season, hopefully with the right additions in the summer. So, yeah, I'm, I'm happy that Michael Richards was on the Arsenal bandwagon. Um, he says that Arsenal will challenge again next season. Um, but, yeah, Arsenal will be back. I think it's been a great season, a season where we've learned a lot about this club. But the most important thing for me is that we've got our Arsenal back and uh, now we go into the Emirates away from home and we enjoy watching this football club again. And it's been a long time since you've said that. Yeah, it is a long time. Um, I, I can't wait to, to get back into Europe in, in the elite level of Europe next season. Yeah. Can't wait to rub it into both Chelsea and Spurs fans that their midweeks are going to be far more boring um, next year, which is also always funny. And I look forward to the transfer window, which of course will continue to bring you coverage of throughout the summer. Um, Xhaka said farewell yesterday. Uh, I, I, we assume farewell. I mean, Arteta played dumb in the press conference more so than I've ever seen him try um, when asked by a good uh, friend of ours, Charlie from Haters, uh, asked him the question about Xhaka leaving. And he was like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you're just so like, hilarious. Oh, that proper you know, poker face, isn't it? At this stage, we all know what's going on. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, 
what do you make of the loss of Xhaka and what do you think that's going to have in terms of an impact moving forwards? Yeah, I, I never wanted him to leave. <laughs> like, he's such a mm. player for this football club. I think the way he's developed in recent seasons, playing in a position where I never thought he could do, to be honest, but he he's made that pos- position his own this season. The goal contributions, the assists, um, you know what he brings off the pitch in terms of the character, the personality he has. I think there was a good article um, the other day where they spoke about Shaka. He doesn't have that many close friends at the club, like best friends, but he's someone that the players respect, someone that uh, the players look up to. He's someone that doesn't take um, like any lateness. Like if, if a youngster is late uh, to training, he doesn't really appreciate it and he'll bollock you for that. So these are all signs that we're going to miss. But it also shows that Mikel Arteta, Edu, they appreciate what Shaka has done in, in the past few past few seasons and I think it's a mutual agreement I think they've come to an understanding that where Arsenal want to go to that next stage to try and lift this Premier League title they can do better and that's not um, criticism on Shaka, but it's just where we're at in terms of where Arsenal need to go to the next stage Granite Shaka as well he'll probably want to get a longer contract um, by Leverkusen obviously apparently offering four years um it's closer to his wife's home or something in terms of that so i think for the family situation i think it's a positive um he'll play at a high level still in the bundesliga for a very good team under jabi alonso so that's going to be very important for shaka but i think it's a mutual agreement i think the fact that arsenal are willing to allow him to leave is a positive in my eyes because shaka is a very good player but the fact that arsenal are allowing him to depart it means that Mikel Arteta and Edu want better. And I think that that in, in the way that we want to succeed in the upcoming years, that's the best way we need to be. So, yeah, I'm going to miss him. Top, top player, fitting farewell um, to score. Not one, just one goal, but two goals. Could have had a hat-trick on another day. But I think this season he's been fantastic. And I think it's so good for him to sign out in a way where the fans are singing his name singing Granit Xhaka, we want you to stay, because a few years ago, I would never have imagined that. So it's it's crazy how fast football changes. But yeah, he will be missed because he's a top, top professional. And yeah, I'm just happy that he's got a fitting farewell in this final Arsenal game. Yeah, and it was a very nice farewell. Um, he, yeah, uh, every time he walked around the stadium, was kind of like slightly held back from the group and was yeah. uh, was getting good clap and uh, and sing song from the from the fans as well. That was that was great. And uh, yeah, I spoke to him after the game. Uh, and yeah, it was it was great. It was just great to to see kind of that appreciation, the full turnaround of of everything. Um, that's happened. Um, and if he indeed is is leaving, which, you know, let's be honest, it very much looks like that that's the case. We have an understanding at FL, uh, Kai's article talking about Bayer Leverkusen effectively agreeing a £30 million deal uh, with Arsenal. Uh, we're still waiting for confirmation on that. I expect that will come this week. It felt like Arteta wanted to kind of keep everything focused on the game until afterwards. So even though Xhaka told us, me after the Nottingham Forest game that we'd hear something in the week, we didn't. Um, mm. I assume that's probably because the club's told him that they want to delay it somewhat, but we'll see. But we need to replace him. Um, Roberto De Zerbi came out after the game for Brighton after their defeat against Villa, which meant Villa, of course, moved into seventh and uh, will play in the UEFA Conference League with Unai Emery next season, potentially for him picking up another trophy in, in Europe. Um, but uh, saying Caicedo can play, can like, like leave, can play at a higher level. Yeah. Do you think that it will be Arsenal that gets him? You know what? In recent weeks, and I know you don't like me jinxing things. I was just about to say, yeah, please don't. (laughs) (laughs) But but in recent weeks, we played against Nottingham Forest last weekend and Mikel Arteta um, altered the formation. And he played with like a back three with party in that inverted right back row and out of possession. um, It's a back four, but in possession, party moves into midfield. he done Mm. it again. Um, Yesterday, I think, uh, uh, against uh, Wolves, it was similar. He never changed the team. Uh, Jorginho was still in the team. Shaka was still in the team. Party was playing that inverted role. And I look at it, and I think he sees Moises Caicedo in that role as that inverted right-back, if I'm honest. So, out of possession, he's playing in a right-back role, in a back four. 
but in possession, he's playing in the midfield. And then maybe potentially Mikel Arteta wants two creative number eights. So I could see Declan Rice coming in. I can see Moises Caicedo coming in. And I could see Arsenal going for a left-sided uh, midfielder to, to replace Granit Xhaka because the links to Mason Mount, they've been there. Kudus, that could be an interesting one because in this system, I look at a player like Mason Mount, uh, Kudus, um, they would score many, many goals in, in, in Mikel Arteta's system that he has right now. Because if Shaka is getting into so many goal-scoring positions and he's not really that type of midfielder, imagine what someone who is comfortable doing that role can offer this Arsenal team. So I've always said to you, I think I said it last week, I think in January they were never going to sell Caicedo, Brighton, because they were going for a European place. But I think there's always been a gentleman's agreement there with Brighton uh, and Caicedo that in the summer you'll get your wish and the fact that Roberto De Zerbi is so open, every press conference I see him, he's always speaking um, like very openly in terms of, yeah, Moises Caicedo can leave this summer. Um, they can play at a high level. Um, they deserve it. Again, it's up to Tony Bloom, but if it's down to me, they'll go. McAllister is on his way out. Apparently, that'll be done in the early weeks of June. But again, I think both Moises Caicedo and um, uh, McAllister will depart Brighton. And a lot of people are speaking about Chelsea potentially being linked with Caicedo, but it seems that Pochettino's favourite target for, for the midfield position as of this morning is Ogate. So it's it's very interesting. It's very interesting. But yeah, I look at what Mikel Arteta has done in, in the past two weeks. I think he's looking ahead to next season, looking ahead to pre-season, starting to play this new formation. And yeah, if Caicedo fits, comes in, I think he could fit that role very, very well. And I'd be very, very excited, to be honest. Absolutely. Um, I'll be, I think that when it comes, I'm going to write about this in a little bit um, for my lunchtime piece about how I think that a £300 million summer is, is no longer a fantasy for Arsenal, um, especially with the consideration around player sales who could move on. So that if we need to, if we want to bring in Rice and Kaiso, that's going to cost you close to £200 million, I think. And we still need to bring in a right back, potentially a forwards, maybe a left back right-sided centre-back, you know, creative midfielder is is very much on the agenda as well at the club. So you're starting to talk about, you know, 200 plus million pound spending. And I don't think that it's that wild of, of a view as it probably was a year or two years or certainly more time passed since then that it would have been viewed very differently. So, yeah, I think there's real hope uh, about what Arsenal could do this summer, but the pressure is on the owners to you know, to, to invest, to spend. It's pressure on Edu to to get good money in and negotiate for primary targets. Edu's now the man in, in focus, you know. Yeah. Arteta's been in focus all season and Edu, of course, has taken some in, in January and in the summer window. But now is, is Edu's time. And is this in some ways a, a make or break for, for Edu this summer for a lot, of, do you think? Definitely, definitely. Um the pressure is already on him, if I'm honest, because I've seen on social media a lot of Arsenal fans, you, you may rightly or wrongly disagree, but they're a bit frustrated in terms of how much they get for Granit Xhaka. But if I'm honest, I think it's a fair price, to be honest, because you need to take uh, into account everything in terms of his age, the fact that he wants to leave. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to be too harsh on Edu in terms of that deal with Bayer Leverkusen, but I want Edu to get big deals over the line now. Um, and, and that includes Declan Rice. Now, there's going to be a lot of teams after Declan Rice this summer. And that includes big, big clubs such as Manchester United, Bayern Munich, etc. And if we can get a player like that over the line, I'll applaud Edu and I'll say, OK, fair enough. He's got a massive player over the line that other teams in and around Europe wanted. And that includes, again, Moises Caicedo in that same bracket because... Teams are going to be sniffing around Moises Caicedo as well because the fact that Roberto De Zerbi is open to allowing him to leave Brighton this summer, I, I'd be shocked if like big European clubs are not after him because, again, he's such a very, very good player. So the pressure is on Edu. The pressure is on Edu, not only in terms of bringing incomings in, but outgoings as well because the future is, is obviously this talk of Quirantini departing this summer, what fee will we get for him, which is fair, £30 million pounds potentially you're looking at. But if we can get other teams uh, in and around the table, and like such as Newcastle, Aston Villa, 
etc trying to sign Kirantini maybe we can increase that price and that goes the same for Milsim Ifro, Aston Villa, West Ham United so I'm not only focusing about incomings this summer I want to see um, players that are potentially departing we get good offers in for, for them so it makes sense for us to sell them I don't want to see Arsenal allowing Emil Smith Rowe to depart for £20 million I think that would be a joke like Kieran Tierney again £15 million it would be stupid so the onus is on Edu I think this is a make or break summer for him because a lot of Arsenal fans are so torn in terms of since he's come yeah, in that's what I mean business. when I say because yeah. I think there's a lot of Arsenal fans that are indifferent about Edu still yeah yeah, so I agree. I think it, if he can get Rice and uh, Caicedo in before preseason, the pressure will be off him. Will be off him to be honest, because then at least we've got two ready-made players to come in straight away. Our main priority targets for this midfield position. But no, I, I agree with you in terms of um, I think it is or make or break summer for do. Yeah, me too. Uh, I think that it is going to be a summer that will define his potential legacy at Arsenal. If Arsenal can pull off. A transfer window which is in line with our expectation of spending on significant talent then I think you know there is few people that will be able to question him and you know what he's done at the club at this point but if we do let players leave for below their market value if we're unable to get in priority targets like Rice or Caicedo you know etc one of those two for me has to come in this summer. definitely yeah definitely has to come in this summer um and if he doesn't get one of Rice or Caicedo then there's going to be and they move, you know, if if, he, if, both, if they were to stay at Brighton or West Ham, which I think is unrealistic, mm. then okay, because then maybe no one's reached what they wanted, like with Caicedo in January. And I forgave that miss of, of yeah, Caicedo yeah. in January because, you know, he weren't for sale and Brighton weren't sending him for whatever price Arsenal put up. But he is clearly available this summer. Roberto De Zerbi has said himself that that's the case. In fact, I think Roberto De Zerbi has kind of laid out the gauntlet, if you like, to Edu. Yes, yeah. Um, <laughs> If you don't get one of Rice or Caicedo this summer, then an Arsenal side that have competed for a title, that are the most attractive, alluring place they've ever been to not be they able are, to get yeah. those players in, it's that's a question mark, isn't it? Yeah, hundred percent. Like now is the opportunity for us to go full throttle in, in this summer transfer window because I think Ian Wright said it in an interview about a few months ago that a lot of players were waiting for Arsenal to get into the Champions League. And once they do that, there's going to be a lot of uh, players in and around Europe that want to join Arsenal because they're back in Europe's elite. And now that we are, Arsenal's an attractive uh, proposition. They already are without uh, Champions League football. But the fact that they've now added that um, this season, a lot of players will want to join Arsenal because um, they're in London, attractive, young team, very good manager, um, good wages, competing with Manchester City now for, for the Premier League. Um so yeah, the, the onus is on Edu, but hopefully, hopefully he'll do it. Fingers crossed, he get it done. Um, we'll of course be continue to bring you coverage all throughout the summer and be updating on transfer targets, speaking to experts, speaking to other journalists about uh, potential moves and transfers, and of course, then the build up begins to pre season, uh, which gets underway in July, a whole month away from now. It feels like such uh, an incredible amount of time, but of course, we'll be bringing you all the updates and uh, and the shows, of course, will be continuing as well. Uh, but Umar, thank you so much, as always, for joining me. Much appreciate it. Yeah, no, thank you, as always, TC. I had a quick question, though, before mm. we wrapped up. Um, out of the relegation teams, which one player would you take? I was just curious. Uh, Madison. Okay, yeah, I was going to say the same. So yeah, agree I, that. I think... Um, Mason Mount looks like he's more likely to go to yeah. uh, Manchester United. And I think a great alternative. And I think we do need to look to bring in that goal scorer midfielder as well, with Xhaka yeah. leaving as well. You know, seven goals, seven assists that we lose um, with him. So, yeah, absolutely, James Madison. I agree. Let us know in the comment section who you'd pick um, and drop a like on the video while you do so. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you again very soon. Have a fantastic day and week. And as always, keep following us down, down the Arsenal way. Glory, 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 glory,